Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Exam Rack. Here you will get all the videos for free. Um, just subscribe to our channel or visit our website. Um, my name is Shatapti and today I'll be continuing um, the chapter of Laws and Laws of Motion and Force. This is our last discussion on this top topic. We're going to be discussing some exercises. Okay, so let's start. This is the first very basic sum uh, of force. Uh, as a such concept nahi hai isme. A truck starts from rest and rolls down a hill with a constant acceleration. It travels a distance of 400 meters in 20 seconds. Find its acceleration, find the force acting on it if its mass is 7 tons. Now, 7 tons uh, ka conversion karna parega, 7 ton. 1 ton means 1000 kg, so 7 tons is 7000 kg. Okay. So, before doing any sum, we have to first write down whatever information we have with us. Okay. So, car, uh, the truck starts from rest, matlab, initial velocity will be zero. Um, acceleration is constant, we don't know it yet. So, let's just put a question mark here. Okay, uh, distance of 400 meter, S is equal to 400 meter and time is 20 seconds. We also have the mass which is 7000 kgs. Okay, so first we have to find acceleration. This uh, we'll find with the concept that we had learned in our previous class. So, which for uh, formula we should use uh, from using from the chapter of motion in one uh, d? We'll use the formula S equals to u t plus half a t square, right? Okay, so now u is zero. We know so ye Wala pura is zero ho jayega. So it's basically S equals to half AT square. So this will give us 400 equals to half into A into T square. T is 20, so 400. Okay, so yaha se And from here we can directly cancel and get 2 so basically acceleration equals to 2 meter per second square okay so we got our first part of the question which is find its acceleration okay now we come to the second part second part may have to find the force acting on it if it's mass 7 tons very easy f equals to m a mass into acceleration so, here F will be equal to mass is 7000 kgs into 2 meter per second square. We know the unit of force is Newton, the SI unit. So, it will be 14,000 Newton or we can write it as 1.4 into 10 to the power 3 Newton. It's better to always uh, represent your answers like this. Okay, anyway, so next question. Yeah. An 8000 kg engine pulls a train of five wagons, each of 2000 kg, along a horizontal track. If the engine exerts a force of 40,000 Newton and the track offers a friction force of 5000, then calculate accelerating force, acceleration of the train. Okay. So, here we are seeing two kinds of forces. One is which the engine is exerting, that is 40,000, and another the friction force, which is 5,000. So, what is a friction force? Friction force is anything that is opposing the actual um, applied force, right? So, it will always be in the opposite direction to the applied force. So, the engine is exerting a force of 40,000. I'm just writing 40 k newton kilometer so the friction will be obviously in the opposite direction which is 5 k newton so now the thing is that we have to obviously subtract the friction force to get the net accelerating force right because friction is in the opposite direction to our engine Okay, so what will be the net accelerating force? 
just using short form it will be 35,000 Newton right 40,000 minus 5,000 ठीक है हो गया अभी second है acceleration निकाला simple for that we basically need the mass of the whole train now see यहाँ पे ना तो small trick like you just have to basically read the question properly since the engine also has a mass and the engine is inside the train so you also have to uh, add the mass of the engine to the mass of the five wagons right so total mass basically will be eight thousand plus five wagons each of two thousand which is five into 2000 kg right which is equal to 8000 plus 10000 kg which is 18000 or 18 18000 okay so from here we get our total mass so what will be our acceleration so I'll just put a star mark here just write it here use a different color for better understanding huh so f equals to m into a therefore a equals to f by m so f we had gotten as 35,000 so I'm just writing 3.5 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 18 into 10 to the power 3 One second, yeah, I'll take extra zero. Okay, uh, it will it'll be ten thousand. So, yeah, there'll be an extra zero, which will come as eighteen thousand. Okay, so, um, yeah, so now this will be circling. Sorry, I'll pay a point here, right? It will just be 35 into 10 to the power 3. Yeah. So now we'll just uh ye to cut jaga. So we'll just divide 35 by 18, which will come at around 1 point no sorry, 0. Uh -huh. what am I doing? Uh yeah. Come around something like one point um, thirty five to one point zero. So one point zero nine meter per second square. If you can't see the answer, I'll just write it down here nicely. So the answer acceleration will be equals to 1.09 approximately 1.09 meter per second square. Okay. So third question. A hockey ball of mass 200 gram is traveling at 10 meters per second is struck by a hockey stick so as to return to its, along its original path with a velocity of 5 meter per second. Calculate the magnitude of change of momentum occurred in the motion of the hockey ball by the force applied on it by the hockey stick. Now, it's a very easy sum. It is actually not that difficult. You just have to calculate the magnitude of the change of momentum. It is easy. But just the only thing that you have to remember here is that the direction. If the hockey ball is coming like this 
after being struck by the hockey stick it will return to its original path matlab this right so if this was like now a and b if we talk if path a was uh, the act was the first path that the hockey ball took towards the hockey stick and if we choose this as our positive direction so path b will be negative right so whatever goes through path b we have to put the negative sign to it because it is in the opposite direction to that of a as a result when we calculate the magnitude of change of momentum it will be something like this change in momentum equals to mv minus mu right v for final velocity u for initial velocity and now since m is constant we'll just do it as v minus u now what is v v is basically minus 5 meter per second right because it is following this path which is the opposite to its true path through which it had come and we had taken path a as the positive path right so path b is the negative motion as a result v is minus 5 meter per second u initial velocity will be 10 meter per second so now uh, okay since mass is in grams we can change it into 0.2 by dividing by dividing it by 1000 we just change it to 0.2 kg so that we get the si unit of it and it will basically be minus 5 minus 10 meter per second i'm just not writing it yeah so it will basically be 0.2 into minus 15 kg meter per second which will bring us to yeah it's going to bring us to minus 3 kg meter per second so this is your change in momentum due to the force supplied by the hockey stick very simple okay ha huh. this question comes a lot in a lot of exams it's also very easy not to worry about it a bullet of mass 10 g traveling horizontally with a velocity of 150 m per second strikes a stationary wooden block and comes to rest in 0.03 seconds calculate the distance of penetration of the bullet into the block also the uh, magnitude of force exerted by the wooden block on the bullet okay so um what is happening here exactly let this be a wooden block a bullet is coming and it gets stuck at a particular point inside the wooden block after traveling for 0.03 seconds inside the wooden block okay cool so um we have to find a distance see like the first part of the question it's not related to this chapter it's actually from like the concepts of the first chapter which is motion in one direction so yahan pe we calculated by our previous formula so what Do we have here? We have the velocity as one fifty meter per second. We have the time as zero point zero three seconds. We have the mass, which we won't need for this part of the question, but let's just write it still. Ten gram, मतलब ten divided by thousand, which is Zero point zero one kgs, right? Okay. And also, since the bullet is coming to rest, so if initial velocity 
This was you actually. I just did it. I just write it properly. Since u is 150 meter per second, which is the initial velocity, the velocity with which the bullet was fired, and finally it comes to rest, so v, which is the final velocity, will be zero, right? Because it comes to rest, it stops. So from here, um, what will we get? We get, we have to find the distance, right? Which is s. We don't know s here, right? So we can use the third equation that we had learned about s equals to v square. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, v square minus u square by 2a. Okay. Achha. Um. So yeah. So now from here we understand that we don't have the acceleration yet, right? So how do we find it? Easy. Oh, uh, sorry. We have to. We can't use this because we don't have the acceleration yet. We have to find it. So what we are going to do is, we are not going to use this equation. We will use the equation of V minus U by T equals to A. Okay, so with this we first get the acceleration and that is V is 0, U is minus 150 meter. Let's not try the unit for now. So, yeah. 150 by point zero three is the acceleration or technically the deceleration because we have the negative sign here, here and we know since the body ultimately comes to rest so it will not it was not accelerating actually it was decelerating right the speed was constantly decreasing so anyway uh -huh, so acceleration I'll just do it here So from here we get the acceleration as 150 into 10 square divided by 3. Okay. Ha. So this will be 5 into 10 to the power 3 meter per second square. So we get the acceleration and once we have gotten the acceleration we can easily find the force which is mass katha 0 0.01 into 5 into 10 to the power 3 newton we can also write it as 10 to the power minus 2 into 5 into 10 to the power 3 newton we are subtracting the powers so 3 minus 2 will give us 5 10 newton or 50 newton okay so this is the force by virtue of which the wooden uh, the bullet stops after traveling for 0 0.03 seconds inside the wooden block like it can't go on it is stuck that is due to the force that is applied by the wooden block on the bullet right this 15 newton I hope this is clear. Okay, next question. Two persons managed to push a motor car of 1200 kg at uniform velocity along a level road. The same motor car can be pushed by three persons to produce an acceleration. 
what force with what force each person pushes the motor car now the calculation of the sum is very easy but that's not why i kept it in this discussion it is for a little bit of concept that is here it's saying basically if there's a car and two people are pushing it okay and it is going at a constant velocity okay matlab its speed isn't changing with time it's the same every second so if a third person comes who has this who is putting the same strength as the previous two people then we see that there's an acceleration of point 0 to meter per second square so the acceleration is basically because of the third person right so what does this exactly mean so first with the question is that with what force does each person push the motor car let's find the force with which the third person pushes okay ha huh. so basically it will be what it will be mass into acceleration right mass of the car into the acceleration produced some power so 1200 in 2.2 which is 240 newton right very simple so now in the bracket it is written that assume that all persons push the motor car with the same muscular effort so what does this exactly mean that if the third person had exerted a force of 240 newton means the first and the second person also had exerted the same amount of force right so this 240 240 and 240 but the first two people when they were exerting it did not produce an acceleration the acceleration was produced only when the third person was added so this is what you have to keep in mind that who is causing the acceleration and the calculation of the force will be dependent on that particular object only which causes the motion which causes the change of state of rest of the uniform body motion of the body that was only the only reason why i kept this question because the calculation is very simple here okay two object each of mass 1.5 kg are moving in a straight line but in opposite directions opposite directions matlab if they are moving on the straight line means they are moving towards each other right because it is the same straight line but in opposite directions okay dono ka hi mass hai 1.5 kg 1.5 kg okay ha the velocity of each object is 2.5 meter per second okay so if we consider this direction as positive so by sign convention if iska velocity hai 2.5 meter per second iska velocity hoga minus 2.5 meter per second right before collision this key, uh, this is the keyword during which they stick together matlab after they collide they they stick together matlab they become one body forever so what will be the velocity of the combined object after collision now in the previous lesson if you had watched it and if you haven't you can easily just go and watch it it's easily accessible on youtube okay so we had discussed about the conservation of momentum which was that the initial momentum and the final momentum of a body is equal if no other external forces add applied on it okay so we are going to use that concept so initial momentum since the body become one combined body at after collision so the initial momentum although we can we have to calculate separately but still we are going to add them because now 
एट दिस प्रेजेंट मोमेंट इट इज वन सिंगल बॉडी इट्स वन सिस्टम तो इनिशियल मोमेंटम इज वन पॉइंट फाइव इंटू टू पॉइंट फाइव प्लस वन पॉइंट फाइव इंटू टू पॉइंट फाइव राइट सो इट इज थ्री पॉइंट सेवन फाइव प्लस थ्री पॉइंट सेवन फाइव विच इज इक्वल्स टू सेवन पॉइंट फाइव के जी मीटर पर सेकेंड ओके हाँ सो नाउ लेट दिस लेट इस कॉल दिस बॉल इज ए दिस बॉल इज बी ओके सो दिस इज बेसिकली एम ए यू ए एंड एम बी यू नाउ फाइनल मोमेंटम we know that the bodies have stuck to each other so their masses will be added okay so what will now be the final mass mf it is basically 1.5 plus 1.5 equals to 3 kg right so final momentum is basically mf into let's say v we don't know it yet so by the law of conservation of momentum this will be equal to the initial momentum which we had found out as 7.5 kg meter per second right so i'm just putting a star mark and writing it here to so, 3 v Equals to seven point five. Therefore, V will be equal to seven point five divided by three, which is again two point five meter per second. Now, only in this case it has come that the initial velocity of the individual bodies is the same as the final velocity of the combined body, but it may not come in several different. types of questions but here it has so basically the concept is this that once they stick together they are now one simple one single body so their masses will obviously be added and they will have just one singular velocity which we found out like this now i think we've discussed a lot of sums let's just to ease our minds we can go through some conceptual questions so yahan pe it's written why do fielders pull their hand gradually with the moving ball while holding a catch now this i had discussed previously in that last class only we can discuss it again so what what is happening is according to the second law we had found out that f is equals to m into v minus u by t right the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied in the direction of the force applied okay so now the ball is coming to the fielder at a high speed right so it's going to have a good impact because it's coming with a lot of velocity now if we increase the time of impact instead of just holding our hand at the topmost position if we bring it down so it will increase the time of impact as a result of which it will decrease the impact magnitude with which the ball falls on the fielder's hand for which it the fielder will not feel that much pain right so that is the concept here by increasing the time of impact we are decreasing the force the amount of force okay so the second question how does a karate player breaks a slab of ice with a single blow this is exactly the opposite of what we discussed with a single blow matlab the velocity is a lot and we are not giving it any time like the time is i'll just write it again for better understanding here f equals to m into v minus u by t here since we are decreasing the time so much and in the velocity is already a lot 
so the change will also be a lot so as a result what is happening force is increasing a lot more right like the f- amount of impact is obviously increasing because why because f is inversely proportional to t if t decreases manifold then f will also increase the same amount so what happens that the it breaks in a single blow because the force is huge now because we have decreased the time of impact by a huge amount okay yeah the next question it is again a sum okay a bullet of mass 20 g is horizontally fired with a velocity of 150 m per second with a pistol of mass 2 kg what is the recoil velocity okay the recoil velocity of the pistol means whenever you shoot a bullet it also has a reaction force right towards you for which if like you don't feel it because the mass of the gun is huge so it you don't feel that much hurt but if it was a very badly manufactured gun then you could have gotten very badly hurt like so the guns are made in such a way that the recoil velocity does not affect you or your hand but still there is an amount okay so what is the concept behind it like why does it happen it is we can calculate it by using again the law of conservation of momentum since the pistol and the bullet at the time of shooting were one system as a whole their momentum is conserved so initial momentum so this is basically um 20 g let's just change it into 0.02 so it was basically 0.02 into 150 plus 2 into 150 right but the thing here is that this 150 meters per second it is the moment when we fire it right when we have fired the gun so this is actually not the initial velocity this is the mo- uh, sorry the initial momentum this is actually the final momentum that we get so this is the final momentum that we get as soon as the bullet is fired right okay so this is basically 2.2 into storm second So the question here is that a bullet of mass 20 g is horizontally fired with a velocity of 150 m per second from a pistol of mass 2 kg what is the recoil velocity of the pistol okay so here we have to apply some concepts uh recoil velocity is the as soon as the bullet is fired the gun also pushes back due to newton's third law you know so it recoils it sort of pushes back comes towards you so it's known as the recoil velocity now the whole concept is based on again the conservation of momentum since at the time of firing the bullet and the uh, gun they were one system as a whole so the momentum is being conserved we just have to find the recoil velocity or in other words the final velocity of the pistol okay so let's first talk about the initial momentum
so let's call the bullet as b so it will basically be m b u b and for the pistol it will be m p u p right so initially before firing though there was no movement right of the pistol or the bullet or anything so both their initial velocities will be zero so bullet's mass is 20 gram which is 0.02 kg into zero and the pistols will be what 2 kg into zero so basically the initial momentum of the bullet and the piston it is coming to zero okay so now we'll calculate the final momentum ha to yahan pe kya ho raha hai uh the bullet is gaining a velocity of 150 meters per second right so for the bullet it will be 0.02 into 150 kg meter per second yahan pe i didn't write the unit because it's zero but yahan pe i'll just write it later okay so for the bullet it will be 0.02 into 1 uh, into 150 and for the pistol we don't know the velocity yet we just know the mass 2 into let's just call it as vp okay so according to the law of conservation which is writing in short form of momentum initial momentum equals to final momentum so zero equals to yahan pe it is 3 kg meter per second square so that you guys don't forget and keep revising the unit ha to 3 it will be 3 plus 2 into vp right so yahan pe it's basically we are taking 3 to the left side so minus 3 equals to 2 vp or vp equals to 3 divided by 2 minus don't forget it so it is coming to minus 1.5 kg me uh, sorry sorry its velocity so it will be meter per second 1.5 meter per second okay i hope this is clear one second just draw the box nicely um, okay so um yeah we can like if you guys have a confusion i can just write it down here that it is basically m b v b plus m p v b just so that you guys don't get confused okay so this is our last question for today it's just a conceptual fun one so i just wanted to end it on a light note तो यहाँ पे क्या लिखा है कि सेट ऑफ फाइव रुपी कॉइन ऑन अ स्टिफ कार्ड कवरिंग एन एम टी क्लास टम्बलर स्टैंडिंग ऑन अ टेबल एज शोन इन द फिगर यू कैन लाइक वेरी वेल डू विद दिस एट होम ऑल्सो इट्स कैन ऑफ फन सो नाउ वट इज हैपनिंग एज सून एज यू गिविंग अ फ्लिक टू दिस पेपर ठीक है वेरी फास्ट द कॉइन इज एक्चुअली फॉलोइंग डाउन ना वाई इज इट हैपिंग लाइक आइडियली द कॉइन शुड हैव मूवड विद द paper right so why is it falling down like the paper is a more or less a sturdy one so why is it falling down so remember in the first class uh, if you have seen the first class of this and if you have not i'll just still repeat we had talked about inertia right 
right which is the property by virtue of which any object resists is a, a change in its state of rest or motion so it is resisting change at the time when you are suddenly flick flicking the paper in such a huge speed the excuse me the coin is still under the impression that it is still in this position it is still on the paper but the paper has moved behind it below it sorry so what is its only other option it can't float in the air right so it will obviously be pushed down into the glass as simple as that it is happening because the in the up uh, in the time that the coin will realize that oh i have to change my motion from state to rest it is too late because the paper has moved so it has no other option but to fall down a similar example i had given of the carpet and its dusting that whenever you dust it very very fast the dusts don't understand the concept of how fast they have to move to change their motion right so instead of changing its state from rest to motion they remain at rest because they the the reaction time is slow so all the dust falls down in the same way here also by the time it has realized that it has it has to change its motion the coin the paper has already moved below it and so it has no other option but to fall you can uh, easily like do this experiment in home and it's fun and you can also like learn something so uh, that will be all for today uh, thank you for your patience my name is shatabdi i am currently pursuing medicine and uh this was my attempt to make you guys understand the certain like small concepts of physics and you can also refer to the previous lessons uh which you can easily get on youtube do subscribe do follow us thank you